Yes, please. Yes, please. So, super excited to have you. Thank you so much for taking your time and talking about your beautiful journey with us. How did you start flowing? Oh, that's all. The moment we fought, saw, uh, came across the slacklining group is when we the, the entire flow world opened to us. Mm -hmm. And that is when, when we made friends, flow friends, flow me's. And before that, no flow means nothing. Just the just the usual, um, you know, the nine to five work, and you know, party in the week in the weekends, and again work. That was our life. Um, the search is what led us to this, and uh, that's when we found Anirudh was the first person whom I saw, yes. and he blew my mind. He was <clears> so good yeah. at it. As a, as a tech then. person, so he blew good. my mind. He was an OG. And like a dark horse, he would come out of nowhere, just pin poise, <laughs> and then just go off, and would be like. What was that? Yeah. Like, what yeah. is happening? Yes. How is he doing this? Yes, how do you yes, get yes, there? Yes. Like, how do you learn to reach there? Yeah, yeah. Then there was Arjun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it was like a kid, you know. We were like kids watching him. If he put, if he <laughs> brings his pot pie out, we would be like, oh, what, what is happening? And we were like, I want to do that. And then I, then we went into YouTube, and then it's, it's like a black hole, Pandora's box. We opened a Pandora's box of boy world. Yeah. Just binge watch it. I was just absorb it, absorb it, and practice, practice. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you always had friends who would be into flow or like. No, no, that was the thing uh, when the slacklining scene happened. So we were searching, right? We were, we were both searching. We had a day job, and uh, we are both dancers. Dancers, as in, like you know, dancing basically any sort of dance. We were not like trained. She was trained in Bharatanatyam. I just love dancing, like anything that would get my move right, right? And we were in search of such things in Bangalore when we moved. I was a performer as well for many years. I used to perform even for uh, local song releases. We had, we had our own team and it was really nice. But because of my injury, it was pretty bad. I thought, okay, I'm done with art. This is not something that I can get into or move forward. Or maybe at the back then when I was still studying, I thought I could take this up as my career and move forward but then I could not then moving to Bangalore I did my masters and then this came in okay I, I thought okay maybe I can maybe I can't but then there was this uh, poise shattering uh, moment in life where I could it just wouldn't come across to me and then I thought okay I'm going to take it slow maybe my body is not ready for it yet. maybe my brain is not ready for it yet uh, but it it was nice. It was nice that it uh, came along, and we're looking for people. And there were a few right. people in Bangalore who were picking it up, who were still exploring, who had a few props also for us to explore. Like there were a few people who used to meet up. The the scene was very raw and fresh and. Uh, uh, mind opening, I could say. Everyone was still looking for something, looking, trying, exploring the props, and it was it was. <laughs> Why is this so difficult? And seeing me perform, uh, sorry, not perform, seeing me practice, he picked it up and then it just came like this for him. And the next thing I know, I am still with, after butterfly thread, the needle is just not entering my head. And I'm like, okay, I'm really bad at this. This is not happening to me. And he's just like gone to the next oh level. God. He just picked it up and gone poof. And then I, I stopped, my confidence shattered there. And I'm like, this is not <laughs> something for <laughs> me. I, I, I was like, okay, slack learning is not for me. This is not for me. I think I should do something else. And then he took it up. Then he, you continue with your journey. He he, he went nuts with Poi, like literally nuts with Poi. I just watch him perform. So I did not perform again. Practice like three, four in the morning. He used to pick a move. And then he, till he got it right, he couldn't get it out of his head. And I'm like, please sleep or, you know, you have to like take some rest. We had uh, uh, gone, he's going to continue, but I'm going to give one instant. We had gone for a vacation at, uh, and we were hiking up the hill. It was maybe a half an hour hike and I'm holding my bags. I'm huffing and puffing. The fellow is with the boy. He's just like, this is not happening. It's almost coming. See, see, it's coming. And that was the entire conversation that we had. And but yeah. About like when was this time? 2016-ish, 2017-ish, I could tell. Yeah, yeah, that is when uh, it it the world of poi hit us and uh, it took over. I, I, it was a home of poi green, that elastic poi. If you remember those those poi's which extend. Yeah. I, 
tore that boy just yeah. practicing the <laughs> holes <laughs> so so back then that was the scene um um so i was really good at slack lining i mean i loved slack lining um and i was getting really good at it but again we both had a history of injuries <laughs> and her because of dancing and me because i was a fool back then i mean younger days just go take a bike fall down do mad monkey things and just fall and injure myself left and right and and soon with with slack lining also i realized i'm going to i ended up having a lot of dislocations on the line i was doing tricks and i was i realized oh uh, maybe this is not for me and that was sad and then poi came into my life because i saw nishita doing it right and then i picked up poi and like maybe okay maybe this might be my thing <laughs> not much yeah. falling or anything but i could do this yeah. right and i just fell in love with it i mean as if if anybody asked me that's what i tell i fell in love for the second time um that was poi for me i mean of course first was nishita but yeah so i literally fell in love with poi um world opened up for me and uh, and then i checked you know nikul sees play poi um the the and they had such a uh, oriental feel to it that earliest nikul see videos where they had this harem pants and they had that music that music is all is there you know the open ta ta there's a music i think you would know luna right and yeah and that gave me again a such exotic feel to it it's like what is this thing right yeah i would just binge watch it i would just absorb it absorb it and practice practice yeah and let's talk about flow arts what is flow arts for you is happiness in in one word it's just happy it's my happy place simple as that i i can't put it into any it's so it's an escape for uh, reality you go into and everything is happy and peaceful and like, there is nothing that can go wrong there it's nice it's um I, time stops for us that's what happens when when we are in a performance especially um fully focused and uh, where where i am fully focused and i am thinking about you know what's next what's next what's next nishita would be in a spot where she would exuber this confidence which i feel i miss it and i should be doing more of that um but um in one word it's just focused and you're just time stops for us and we are just in the moment we are just giving like show, like performances after performances yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's different when you're performing alone because you can just do anything that you want and there's uh, nobody that's you know there's nobody to coordinate with and there's nobody you have to think about there so uh, but when you're working together it's it's a lot to think about it's it's where the uh, if one person misses the other fills in the spot it's it's something uh, it's this communication non verbal communication that you have to have without anybody knowing that you're communicating and you're getting it done so it it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of patience but it takes a lot of love for the art form also to get there but it's it's nice to be working together it's nice to be constantly inspiring each other to uh, stick to the best at what you do yeah i remember watching him in the lockdown you know watching his videos watching swaroop's videos this guy is kind of crazy you do like left and right because of his videos i got to know there is also a particular name of the trick then i searched it differently but to explore to get to know about this trick i watched it with like couple of videos and i was like okay this trick i need to know this trick i need to know okay okay <laughs> yeah yeah i've been following boom's journey also from you know it's always it I, i i saw the same enthusiasm the same zeal that i had for poi when i saw boom also flowing back then and i think i reached out to boom also like you know keep flowing that's all you know just 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 just, just do keep doing what exactly. you do Yeah, exactly. When I started spinning poi, I used to spin like straight up five, five, six, six, eight hours. Sometimes yeah. also eight hours because there in lockdown time there was nothing to do, yeah. and I was like getting fried, sitting at home. I just go on my terrace and you know start spinning, 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 and then watch videos. And then I was watching all of you guys spinning also. Like I saw that there is also some Indian artists who are actually putting the effort, doing some you know technique. and skills 
right i had my full we have both had a full time job and mm-hmm. i would be like spinning to like 4 or 5 in the morning i had work at 8 or 9 and i would wake up groggy eyed and the moment i go to office and free time i would take up the next video in youtube and see what's the next move i need and i would already play it in my head and come back home and then again like drill 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 so would, my work was suffering actually you would come back and talk technical to me boy technical to me and i'm like <laughs> and there's of course watching you watching yamini i think you were the, yes, the yes, first uh, yes, of yes. women i would saw out there who was like performing practicing had so many props in hand i was like wow <laughs> and 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 i remember uh, luna luna and uh, when you guys did that uh, um the 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 retreat you remember they did the palm torch and uh, the retreat uh, that was really beautiful and i think it was really trail blazing for the time back then when you guys did yeah. it right a lot of people a lot of lot i of think especially it. ladies a lot of a lot of females attended it right luna when yeah. you did it no we these are the things that we remember because if you we were like wow at these things yes. that's why we remember them so clearly or yeah. after so many years as a journey of it was during one of our new year shows actually in um, outside bangalore when we did it and we did it was not a, again we did not have a routine per se about a partner poi or anything of that sort um, but but we um, that is when we realized we did a great show uh, individual and together also it was just you know she moved, she she flows she's flowing with her props and i flow with my prop and the the love that we got from the people the spectators and the crowd um, made me made us realize that we are on to something and uh, we wanted to take it further we it was a very um, eye opening and a happy moment for us that you know as performers we were we were that we were good and we could do more and we also felt that the crowd the the the, the people of the people who came to see also deserved more uh and uh, that made us like really th- i still remember it we were supposed to show we were again in the afterglow of the show and we, it was in the beach and we were sitting and talking that we can do something out of this um and we really need to do something out of this and when we realized when we are good it 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 became like a responsibility for us um to to do something out of it right when it's work and that that's when we started deciding that okay we are going to work on this and it it was nice because that uh, show ignited that fire yes, that was yes. inside us for me uh, after performing and taking that break thinking okay that life is done for me it restarted this whole love for performing love for the art and us doing it together we realized this is something we can nurture and build and something that we have to work on other, otherwise it will be a shame to throw away yeah, yeah. and that's when we decided okay let's let's do this if we're doing it let's do it properly let's be serious let's practice let's put in the work let's do it properly and uh, i mean yeah, it, it was thinking it thinking it and following is different we have to like actually put in the work to practice but it was a great start um um we were partners way before like flow came into our life right and we were already working on a relationship so that was this was just another another um level of things to work upon and uh, which also again showed us a lot of different shortcomings also <laughs> right right when it comes to performance it's a whole different scene i mean fights arguments and all of that because it's different if we are going to meet you we are going to be as nice as possible <laughs> to you but we are not going to be that yeah, okay i can imagine that hey, this trick you didn't do this trick huh? this <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but but some of we we uh, i think flow one <laughs> at places where we as couple lost yeah. Uh, yeah so i don't know if i'm putting it right i, I don't know no there were there were times where we would not be talking to each other because we would have a fight but like no we have to practice we have a show to go to and then we would be like in serious faces <laughs> so we'll get the moves no that, right. that, that just happened in the last 3 days when we were at humpy i mean it was getting to us with the baby and right uh, it was getting to us and then i was like no this was a mistake i shouldn't have got you back from because it's still 11 months for her and i forced <laughs> her into this i was like nish please come i can't i want you to like i really i like all this 11 months we were getting inquiries for do it shows and we just couldn't do it i mean i was like oh god i don't know how long i can take this and then i got her and then i was like i think this was a mistake i, I think i i just agreed because i want to do it now just get up and let's do it and then she told me like swarup we are professionals <laughs> like you know keep all the fights and everything apart let's just do this show 
and again thanks to her i mean like the types yeah. of practicing we were talking to each other <laughs> music on music and on <laughs> and just and just do the partner pie routine <laughs> you guys are adorable <laughs> oh, is that you're so cute <laughs> yeah and it's so beautiful that you guys like holding up to each other in every form of your life like not just slow but also the other life as you said she said to you that you know we are professional we don't have to get our files and all into a profit so yeah like really level up thing bro even to think about <laughs> okay so tell us some incident bro you know, like uh, which happened in your journey which change your perception about being a flow artist about being a, a performer and you know which is the lesson that you also wanted to share with all the flow community and all the flow me which is around you and which is like coming up the food um incident wise um as performer I, uh, as a performer what changed my entire i mean i was um i was serious i was serious about performing i mean i every show i really wanted to give it my 200% but what changed me is once i i, I was going through this podcast of uh, um uh, like i had this idea but what really formulated that entire thing about what my feeling was towards performance was listening uh, um anthony kidis he's uh, he's uh, the the lead singer of uh, rhcp red hot chili peppers and uh, there was a, this podcast podcast where he was talking about what performance meant to him and this and this guys are like huge right like 50000 yeah. 60000 of folks coming into their shows right and he was telling me that uh, which really opened up and which resonated a lot and that was that um he said that all these people who come to listen to them right i mean they don't have to give a great perform they are already rcp they are so famous already right and he told me that these people have problems right the common like the people who come to watch see our shows the daily problems you know debt you know uh, household problems all of this and what they are coming to 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 see us is to escape to to get away from all of that and as performers it's it's our responsibility it's we are we are like you know to to make them forget all of that right that hit the mark for me and from that day on i really wanted to do that to in in bring that in every one of my performance and apart from that another thing was that i was a representative of my art form right within your flow community it's fine i mean you meet your flowmies and they're all you know flowing you don't need to do anything much you know you you have that love for the flow already in it but when you are a performer nobody like majority of the people who are watching you don't know anything about flow forget about poi stuff or anything of that sort right and i felt i am a representative of my art form Absolutely. and 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 when they come and tell me like you know whoa what was that and you know you opened our world you know i never knew this and all this thing existed and i realized that i am a representative and uh, that gave an extra responsibility to me to give my to give my best with every performance and and to work on my show to work on my thing because these are like we say muggles and i had to and this muggles i had to show that what this art form is all about like boy is so beautiful i mean staff or and fans is so beautiful and i wanted to give that thing right yeah so so and also a thing that for you it might be your 10th performance 15th performance 20th performance but for the person watching it's yeah. their first, first ever performance for most of them i'm not telling everybody and so you have to give your best for them to know if you are going to spread flow if you are you have to give your best so every performance i'm not telling every day is the same but you have to make your every performance the best and i think to give a good performance comes with good practice and also with experience but comes with good practice why i say practice is a lot of things can go wrong when you're performing maybe your prop fails maybe some your costume breaks off maybe music, the, m- music goes off anything can go wrong but to keep your expression pleasant to to continue performing making ensuring that the audience does not know that any flaw has taken place and to seamlessly give a performance comes with practice comes with experience comes with uh keeping in mind that 
your personal problems everything else aside your performance first and that i think these are the few things that we have uh, taken in away from our journey together and this is what we aim to provide i mean a lot of things have gone wrong in a lot of performances yeah. of us lot of it but yeah yeah i mean you guys would know it i you mean luna would, would have been way 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 back even then before we started performing and you know it's a high it's a high stress environment right and 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 another thing is that i got tired of my routine man mm-hmm. uh, you know you have your own routine set up right and at and and soon after i realized that i'm getting tired of my own performances and and that is when i wanted to like you know add more you know do some variations because you have your own style everybody you know boom has your own signature style luna has your own signature style and i had my own signature style and i started getting tired of my own routine um i would say that was a big thing for me at 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 one point i was like okay maybe this is my thing maybe i won't have anything but that observation of my own show that you know i have this set routine and i'm not doing anything much forced me to add in more elements forced me to learn more so it's it's like a language right poetry is a language i mean the more words you know the more way you can express the language and the more words here is the more moves the more and more moves i started learning i could combine it in different ways and give it as a language you know the song produce a like song out of it yeah yeah, yeah. like the more the song you are just putting your poetry notes yes yes you are having fun with yourself and performing and that shows rather than just doing what you know and you're like okay i'm done with my done set. with the done with my set right i i think as a performer this is a big thing once you start getting shows you kind of get stagnant you get stagnant you guy you 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 are tired you lose interest to not lose money interest. is coming money is coming so i mean you have your moves i mean i can do i can pull i can pull off the show i don't have to work on myself right, i right. don't have to improve myself because you know i'm already there i don't yeah, have to you have a name also that. you have a name now your people know you people are booking you and then it kind of creates that space where you're not working much on your uh, overall thing your art form stays it stays in the same place yeah. where you have left it and yeah. yeah it it takes quite some to i mean we got bored with our own performance at <laughs> one point we're like we can't do the same moves again yeah. this is yeah. not happening yeah. <laughs> and uh, i feel i feel what you're saying is absolutely correct but that's where all the flow is or all the comrade which you have comes in the picture like somebody mm-hmm. else doing something and you are watching them oh this is something something which i should do totally you know, totally that, yeah so that's like one of the benefit that we have this whole community together and everyone has their own different flow own different tricks and own yes. different way of expressing so mm-hmm. that is also something which is keeping us inspiring keep us do something different than what we do everywhere you really 100% true true at some point you realize that wait that is my level now so i can go above it yes yes, yes. exactly because as you said anything mm-hmm. under that would be boring and disinteresting so it yes the next level now so my next question is for nishita so nishita how is your experience of coming back into the scene after really long <laughs> it is really nice my uh, heart is full i can say <laughs> i mean um so oh, the pregnancy wasn't planned it happened and so i was in i wouldn't say peak but i feel in that entire rough, uh, performing career i was almost at my peak of it and suddenly it felt like the rug was pulled under me and i had to just stop so it it was hard the first uh, two months was hard because i was uh, supposed to take bed rest it was really hard um and then slowly i started practicing a little bit i still performed at my fifth, fourth fourth fifth no fifth month. month sixth month that was the last show together <laughs> yeah, that was the last month, show together i was like okay uh, i think i don't think i should push further but respect for you for doing that huh? 
never seen somebody doing that. I have the, the, the client, the client came and uh, asked us, "Is is is she pregnant?" You know, yeah, <laughs> she saw the bump. They saw the bump. That was, and like, that was it. They're like, "Are you okay? Like, can you be performing?" And I'm like, "No, no I'm good. I'm good." <laughs> yeah, that was the last, and we called it after that. We're like, "Oh no, we are pushing it too much now." <laughs> <laughs> they're like no oh, this is the time you must have <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah. it was really nice to you know just get into the scene again i am i'm pretty sure you have must miss lot of things which is happening yes <laughs> i think i really tried during even though how however hectic it was i really tried uh, sticking to flow i couldn't do much of fans because my fans broke but with boy I really picked it up during that entire time. Uh, my baby was growing. Uh, every time you would sleep, I would go like, "Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." And there were a lot of challenges that came online that helped me also to stick to it. Group like at the Himalayan Flow Arts Gathering. So, what was your experience through these kind of meetups? Um, the Flow Arts Gathering in Himachal was one of the best thing that I have. Um, again, she doesn't give me the smile. Was one of the best things as a, as a as a pro artist. <laughs> it, it was it was one of the best things that I have experienced as a flow artist. Um, it was really beautiful. Three days, um, but as you know, but anything other than that, um, to be very frank, I have. Mm, as a community i have not felt that uh, apart from the usual the old bangalore scene when we had that slackline scene going on but if not for that i have not experienced a good community wise feeling um, with respect to flow um now um, maybe 6 months back i came across two or three um, artists who are really into they i can see the love that i had harbored you know i still harbor towards the flow and we do get together we talk about we send each other videos about hey look at this artist you know he's doing some crazy thing and uh, but but other than that um as a zeal for flow and the flow scene even though i really wanted to feel that i could not get that feel right i in bangalore especially i did not get that maybe i was still i'm still speaking from the poi perspective and even the contact staff perspective and the staff spinning perspective especially but again hoop scene is a whole different scene hoop scene is a whole different scene in bangalore they have their own uh, big community yes. and uh, yes. they have their own it's beautiful the, the strength in them is beautiful it's really beautiful yeah yeah um flow jams as in fire jams happen from time to time in bangalore uh, that's a definite fresh breath of fresh air for us i mean the love Uh, we see during that period is really nice um, but but to be really frank i feel um, the real work happens in your four walls right that's when the real work happens between your four inside your room inside thing the work happens and then the the flow meet happens and then the that what i can see i can see who has put in the work i can see who the love for their art i can see that during that period Uh, but otherwise just to come and just to flow and just to have fun and fool around yes uh, but that also doesn't happen much especially in bangalore i don't see it happening um but three of you sorry major mentor wise major what mentor 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 wise <laughs> No, no, not at all, not at all. I mean, as I mentioned, right? I, I really get inspired by the um by when I see somebody who's. It, it's not just about someone who's a seasoned um artist or a seasoned person who's with the prop. Even a new person who picks up the uh, any prop, right? It, it's different because their brain is wired yeah. differently, and the way they understand the prop, it, it's like the way he understands flow, then the way I understand flow. We are both completely different that way. Yeah. Yeah. completely different our approach towards learning a move also is completely different yeah. so we actually sit and observe we'll be like oh this is how they've come to this like the transition the transition is how you are also you how your brain understands like oh this is how they transition and it's nice to learn because a fresh mind gives fresh ideas yes so it's it's a lot to learn from every anybody who picks up a prop and who gets into flow it's so much to learn from everybody true true no doubt about that Uh, my only gripe is that I only wish there were more poi and uh, more poi, more poi fanatics or poi, you know, lovers around, right? Um, um, 
Uh, but there is only so much you can do. I mean, I can put out videos, I can talk about things and, you know, but I came like how hoop lovers, right? Like, you know, they all, I don't know. I don't know what brings that hoop family together. Um, they, but they all work in their own place and then they get together and then they exchange ideas, right? Um, I have seen people who come, pick up poi, come together in the flow gathering. They're all having fun and everything, but then they drop off. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I think it has to come from within. But I also feel that, uh, again, not to be a poi el elitist or anything, but I feel that poi has a bit of difficulty there. Um, yeah. Do you think so? I don't know. I feel so. I don't make this a poi flow thing, poi cast or something of that sort. But I think it's more, more, I feel from my understanding of learning or teaching the poi, it's more about their body type, like how good with, they are with their body. Sometimes people know things, sometimes people have to see what is happening. Even though you give them the instructions, they are not able to do that. So that is something which is like, they themselves are restricting to do that. Okay. That is one of the problems that people are facing, but not able to understand, oh, this is also happening. Like they are while also spinning normal two beat, three beat, or even just spinning forward direction or backward direction, people have a lot of, you know, like their arms and their elbows are more straight. Like they are not just moving. It's like a robot doing this thing. You okay. know, rather than just losing it out. Right. right. Sometimes they have to get into that thing that, you know, while spinning or while doing this thing, you have to actually use your whole body as well as while being so calm that your body shouldn't be more stagnant. So that is also one of the things that people have seen in their journey, which is also like one of the things which... I mean, I would like to say that people think a little bit about this, that this is not happening with me, or that this is not happening with me. Another thing is that Poi doesn't have a shape, right? All other props you see has a shape to it. And I think that works in their behalf, right? The Poi, there's no shape to it. It's just a ball and a string. And because of that, it provides that initial uh, inertia for people to learn because they find it difficult to control it. Anybody who sees sock poi, a lot of people have told me that looks easy. You know, you know, you're just spinning socks. And then when they get into it is when they realize, oh, this is not so easy as it seems. And uh, um, but the beauty of that is that because it has no shape, you can do N number of things with that poi, right? Endless. The, the, because it has no shape, right? Then you can give your own shape to it. Doesn't happen with all the props, you know. They are all exactly. beautiful in their own places, but I feel that's something that has that doesn't go in the poi's direction. Is that newbies find it a bit difficult? Um, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Feel, yeah, for the newbies, I feel the tricks which you teach them is usually have to be more not complex, but just to get into that zone. It has to be more like easiest and more doable tricks rather than just more technical, you know, like true, true. Like a uh, soft flower or something like that. Right, right. I feel um, when when I was teaching people, I've realized that their mind opened up. I mean, their love for real poets when they understood like, oh, this is what poets and they got into flowers. The, when they got into flowers, when they got into those um, uh, the wall plane and the wheel plane and how the world opened up for them with the flowers is when they realized, oh my God, oh, you can do all of this thing with Poi. Oh, this is what Poi is. This is what, you know, the madness of Poi is like, you know, then they get. But to get to that point, right, uh, that's difficult. That's yes. I, feel, I feel it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. You know, Luna, you were saying something. I also feel like uh, the biggest challenge when it comes to poi is the left hand oh, yeah. yeah 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 it does just <laughs> what are you doing what, 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 like <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> like are you here can you help yeah. yeah so this this problem i did not face with fans as much i'm not telling uh, i didn't face it at all but then fans was easier for me yeah um, right fans yes it was it was much right it was much easier uh, that is when um, initially because i i was poi shattered <laughs> i switched to fans <laughs> uh, 
Don't shatter with the nice turn because I know people would be shattered with anything as much as they get shattered with boy after. I swear, I was so disheartened. I was like, why is this not happening to me? Why, why can't I? This trick now, not in three years. Yeah, why, why is this not happening? Why am I not good at this? Why can't I pick this up? And then I, I spent hours and hours watching Maria Prokofievna's uh, fan performances, and I was like, how is this happening? How is she doing this? And before even I got my first pair, I think I have I have made given Maybe. a lot of views to her videos, I guess, on YouTube. And then I got my first pair of fans, and I thought, okay, I think this is my prop. I think I can work with this. And then once I progressed a little bit with fans, and then I came to boy, he's like, now I understand you. <laughs> now you. Yeah. Now I things get opened you. up for her. <laughs> it's nice how one prop to one prop it transitions. Yeah. Right. It it's very nice. and i feel that's a very good thing what she did you know people who find difficulty with one prop they should explore another prop mm. and that gives them a whole different perspective but there's also a loophole here that uh, people then end up picking up too many props too many props and get lost in it yeah then it again becomes scattered um i would say stick to one or two props one prop yeah. is the best but if you're feeling that you are having a you're hitting a roadblock which you will 100% with every prop uh, just pick up another just keep a backup prop i did not do that um for 3 years i only did poi um luckily i whenever i hit roadblock i somehow practiced and went through it but i'm pretty sure that will not be the case for everyone so that's another thing i feel that you should have two props but that shouldn't be like again you are not scattered one prop should always be your main prop and uh, the side, the backup prop is just something to get off when you get tired or when you're like big roadblock you're not yeah. going to move at all you know that so that will be will give you a better perspective and you can come back and apply that to the the your main prop um but in time when you realize that you're going somewhere with the the main prop then you can give your attention to the other prop also <laughs> and now you have two props you're getting to better it for me it really helped because controlling yeah. planes in uh, fans is much easier, easier than poi so for me if i got stuck in one prop i would go to the other i would learn it in it i was like okay this works and this is how my uh, wrist is supposed to move this is how my body is supposed to move so it's not that i always switch back and forth but if i hit a road block i would pick either hoops i take double hoops or i would take fans or if i would get stuck in fans i would come to poi and sometimes it would click in poi i was like okay this is how i am going to maneuver and somehow get it in the other prop so it has really helped me and i think because of that and then um poi improved and then poi opened up to me and i was like finally you came to me <laughs> you got it the love i was showing you for so long and then poi opened up and poi has been beautiful I really want to pick up double double staff now, but I'm I'm not going near it because um, I'm already scattered. I have the booking now. I have my contact staff, and then I have my poi, and I have the dragon, and I'm not able to give time to any of them properly. This is what happened once we started performing, and we wanted more uh, props in our bag, and then we started picking up props and learning, learning, and then. all the most of our practices are all half baked we half -baked. can't like put uh, time to one prop that we actually want to practice and at one point you are like all over i am all over the place and all over the place and um i don't want to do it i don't want to pick up any new any new for prop anymore um um i don't know i i want to spend time with the props which is already there i'm not doing justice to any uh, to my boo gang and to my dragon <clears throat> to be very frank i'm not doing justice to both of them um poi and uh, contact staff still i would say that you know okay um i give my time to them it's okay but it, uh, because of the fact that booking and my dragon are suffering i don't want to pick up any other prop i really don't want to yeah also i what i wanted to say is like having more than one prop is like the theory or the techniques which you using for your main prop you can also use it for the another one mm -hmm. like there are some techniques and there are some tricks which is like a little similar so you can actually use one props technique to pin the another prop as well so that yeah. is also where you know like you are balancing your two prop thing as well as well as you are learning something different in True. both the props i saw some of nishita's uh, insta reels which were like this with the fans yeah. uh, who kind of boy yeah 
this is something i started uh, because i wanted to stay back in the uh, flow i wanted to keep my mind active because it was too many hours of baby crying <laughs> i wanted to stay in this yeah and then i thought why not <laughs> you know inspiration comes from such places you know you know out of the blue nishita suddenly had like i'm going to do the series i'm going to do the series this is what has helped me i'm going to give back to the community and i'm going to do this <laughs> yeah yeah and it was like now of all the time now you find you know you, but she did it she pulled it off and that was the time that she took to to record it to do that to editing and all that's a wonderful job actually I, i was really happy she did that you know and i was also learning a lot from it because the way she researched and she found the grip strength grip way the changes and everything right is really nice it's really beautiful how they transition from prop to prop it's really nice and once you start teaching this is so true you actually learn more than you teach yes. <laughs> so i have learned much more than true. i'm true. actually putting out there yeah, i'm taking a break and i'll be back with more <laughs> <laughs> Amazing four toy spinners official. <laughs> <laughs> who are your favorite flow artists? Like who do you really look up to? Each one of you. Um, I have a lot. I am a uh, fan of the female uh, uh, species, so I have a lot of female spinners I look up to. Uh, there's Maria Prokesina who has been my uh, idol from the start because uh, I, I, yeah, her fans is on another level. Yes, yes. And then since I got pregnant, I have had a lot of uh, mothers out there who uh, are performing, who have babies, and who are excellent in their uh, uh, artistry. There is Celine. There is uh, Vanessa Spears. Uh, these are the people I really look up to, and there are uh, toy spinners we we admire. I am not getting the name, so please pitch in. There are uh, toy spinners we we watch videos together, and we go like, oh, how is this happening? How is that happening? I think uh, I know the guy. His Insta name is Ifesic or something like this. Yes. His, uh, his same time, same time, same time, same, same, time. Time, same direction. Same time, same direction. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's his partner as well. Uh, Kate. Yeah, Katherine. She is also really good. Oh, uh, and then from Indian spinners, Luna, you, Yamini. I've watched you guys. I've watched you perform. I've watched your videos like on end to see, especially when I just began to see palm torches. How you guys were maneuvering around it. Fans also. You guys had, I think, choreographed a few performances initially as well. so i really looked up to you guys as performers totally as performers i mean that world you guys opened up that world for us you know how to because we were newbies right we were flow artists we were lovers of flow but flow, uh, performance wise yes you guys were our inspiration we did take our inspiration from guys, you guys that means a lot <laughs> and from bangalore there was anirudh who was an og yeah, <laughs> he is a mystery man you have to really look for him to meet him and then i was posting some i'm coming to bangalore <laughs> and he just commented bro nice 3d plane manipulation bro how come this guy knows 3d plane <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah. his profile, and he's like some oldy guy, bro, spinning boy, and now he doesn't even post pit, like videos, right? Yes. yes. He even back then he never used to post uh, videos. If you need to see Anike Anirudh, you need to come to Kaban Park on a Sunday, and then you would come, and then yes, you would see some flow scene happening. You would see. You would do post. some uh, major uh, tech, move, tech moves, tech and moves, and you would disappear. We're like, what did he just do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he just watch? I'm yeah. back now. Yeah, so my inspiration, um, I would say Ronan, uh, Mc, Ronan McLaughlin is uh, one of my inspiration. Yes. I I really look up to his flow, and uh, I mean all the my inspirations all come from the OG scenes actually. To say the good old, I think that can be represented, that can be seen in my poi also because I kind of you know you end up putting out what you watch and what you get inspired from. Nikulsi for sure. Um, Uh, Ronan, um, then um, Thomas Johansson. Uh, uh, Thomas Johansson is, uh, I think, Nevisol or uh, then Alien John. Um, all this, all these guys were like putting up like major, major boy. Um, they would really go deep. 
right? And with performances, yes, of course, Thomas Nevisol and Ronan. Um, Nikulsi did not do much with respect to the performances. And when I also heard his podcast, he said that he has not he has, he has not performed much as much as he has put out content. Um, uh, then I would say um, even uh, G. I don't know if you guys know G. Uh, G is also uh, with respect to performance, giving poi performances, catching the beats, giving those. You know, uh, you know that they really go deep into their performance wise, right? Um, they are they are some of my inspiration. Even one day spin for that matter, I am very much inspired oh, yeah, by one day spin. spin. The content, her <laughs> flow, the way she has put out the one day spin page, yeah. it's it's fantastic. I mean, the amount of work that she has put into spreading out poi. um the love for the flow that's fantastic i mean i'm inspired and even for the in, when it comes to lady spin uh, lady spinners i am inspired by liz knights uh liz knights is another um, poi spinner i look up to i think her kate uh, mccoy's tall combo there is a tall uh, combo by her beautiful i love that combo i use it in my combo in my flow every time it's just beautiful i'll share it with you um but yeah i mean it's a whole again i mean uh, i just keep finding flow Artists like Timetek, for an example. Again, mm. I I don't understand Timetek's flow. I think I've been spinning for seven years now, That's and then I see Timetek doing the thing he does, and I still like I don't know what he does at times.